Tracy and lead actress Natalie Krill. Um, so I'm wondering if we can start perhaps, um, Stephanie, with um, your creative process and what inspired you to tell and share this story and where um, Jasmine and Dallas kind of came from in your creative landscape. So I told myself that the first project I worked on was going to be a, uh, a sort of a lesbian love story. Um, I was going to find a way to increase the representation of queer stories on the screen. And I said, you can't do anything else. I put myself in that box. You can't do anything else until you, you do that, until you write a love story that you're going to want to go to the theater to watch. Um, and then, so I started writing. And Jasmine and Dallas came to me, and then I started to write down what they were saying. And um, I, I sort of moved very naturally uh, within their psychology, um, and, and uh, so yeah, so I, I do remember the exact moment where I found the characters. I was in bed. It's a good place to write a movie like this, um, and uh, and I was like, they, it just it just happened. These two people started conversing, and I, I was just yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, Natalie, um, you know, your performance is so courageous and vulnerable on screen for so many different reasons. And um, I'm curious if you can tell with us uh, how, how you came involved with the project, what casting was like, and also how you approached Jasmine. Because she's, she's very complex, there's a lot going on there. Uh, well, I actually was doing a play at a tiny little theater in Toronto that sat, I think, 37 people. And Stephanie and Melissa um, happened to be at the play one night and saw me in the play and then they asked me to come in and audition. And then I came in and auditioned once and then I didn't hear about it for a couple months <laughs> and I just thought it was gone. And then, uh, and then we did uh, chemistry reads. So I, I read with Erica and some other girl obviously didn't get the role. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was the casting process, which was a sweet story, sweet way to get the role. Um, how I developed Jasmine was, <laughs> I guess I, I drew upon my experience with, uh, letting go of trying to be someone I wasn't and following my own truth. That was like a main core theme for me that was really deep in Jasmine, was her living for other people and what other people saw her to be. Um, and then uh, I also drew upon friends of mine who had came, came out and I was close to them um, and knew firsthand what they went through. So I drew upon that uh, for my preparation. And I used to fold laundry as Jasmine because I found it like very, um, this like domesticated thing that like a woman's supposed to do. And uh, I don't know, for some reason, that was very powerful for me, <laughs> holding laundry. Thanks. Um, Stephanie, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about um, the other star of the film, Erica Linder, who's a Swedish model. I understand this is her first acting role, and I'm kind of curious how she came to the project, and if she also had any previous roofing experience. <laughs> so we found uh, Erica online, um, and uh, she she applied for a job as a roofer, uh, my family business, and I said no, but you should be the actress in in, in my film. I'm leaving the roofing industry, and I'm also and I'm going to take you with me. And and yeah. Why do I not believe you? That's yeah. how that did not happen. I 
it's, yeah, so we need to be, we found Erica online. Um, uh, of, of course, she she's uh, we told her she this is her first role as an actor, and we told her not to take any acting lessons, just to to come in in in, in, the, in this naturalistic way and approach the character in a natural way. Um, and I brought her to a roofing site where she spent three hours nailing shingles. And she got the, she got the technique, uh, so she just kind of imitated. I, I, that's why I knew she was an actor. I'm like, wow, you can just imitate yeah. so easily. I'm like, you're, a, you're an actor, definitely. And she started banging them on, and, and the guys in the crew were like, are we gonna lose our jobs? <laughs> and I'm like, no, you're, you're gonna be okay. She's, she's acting in, in my film, so. That's a good story. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I really love and applaud about this film is how it really celebrates kind of the euphoric and addictive um, nature of new person energy and really celebrates um, this kind of carnal connection between these two women. I'm wondering how your team, you know, approached this from, um, you know, writing to on set as well as editing because it all seems very, you know, very kind of thoughtfully put together to elicit um, a very intentional gaze that's, that's, again, celebratory, puts pleasure first, and I'm, I'm curious what those discussions were like with the team. Tell us about that. I, I feel so old now because I think about that and I'm like, that's so exhausting. I hope I never have to feel that again. <laughs> I want to do other things. Um, but you need to do that first. You have to, like, you have to have that kind of love that just, like, ugh, just makes you want to pass out like that person that passed out outside of, no, I'm just kidding, that was sad. I'm so, and they're okay. They're okay, yeah, she, the person is okay. Um, no, I, I think about how we kept that sacred, that feeling, uh, we we rehearsed in at a cottage in, in Muskoka, uh, in Ontario, which is north of, of the city, and um, the, the five of us uh, just Huddled together and, and made everything the same. Oh, the, 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 the fabulous five. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Melissa like Coughlin, the producer, and myself, uh, Nat with Pearl, Eric Linder. Yeah, that's the, the, the five of us. And uh, we, we we just created so much safety uh, around it and, and said, don't worry about where this ends up. Just just worry about being in the moment. Just worry about now. And uh, yeah. And I think something that brought that like new, fresh energy to the, the connection was that uh, we didn't really rehearse that much. Like, like when we say we rehearsed, we, we spent a lot of time together and we talked a lot about, about the connection and about um, where they were coming from and we talked out every scene like as a group and uh, really worked out what what we wanted to do with everything. But then when it came to filming, we they literally were just like, okay, <laughs> and like pushed us off the cliff, <laughs> you know? Um, but I think that comes across on the screen because like most of the stuff that ended up in the edit was like the first take, you know? Maybe some second take stuff cut in there, but it's, it's all what happened, like just initially between us. We also we shot chronologically, and um, and typically you don't shoot chronologically uh, when making film, and that was part of that was just to, to kind yeah. of keep that sort of momentum of, of the kind of initial spark. Uh, so like the first kiss is like the first kiss yeah. of, of the yeah. So. And I'm curious because that is a, kind of a different take than a lot of uh, crews approach. Was that to further draw out that kind of newness and connection and that physicality and that spark? Or was it, okay, we're just gonna try this as an experiment? I mean, tell me more about that, because that's really interesting. Yeah, it was to draw it out, and it was to help Erica, who had never been on a movie set before. Um, we thought it would be easier for her to move through the script chronologically rather than having to say, okay, today I have to be at the breakup, mm -hmm. because it works best for the crew and, and financially. Um, uh, so, and, and that she didn't have to move back and forth in the beats, so she can move through the beats as, as it was. So talking about beats and writing, I'm curious um, what we saw tonight, which I know is the, the kind of same iteration of what, what's been on the circuit, how true is this to your first couple of drafts? Like how much, uh, from a writing standpoint, as a, as a creative person and artist, um, I'm wondering if you can share with us, like how much does a project change from when you start on the page to when you think you're finished and then is rewriting still happening at all on set? 
in terms of filmmaking process? Does that happen? Does we, not? we stuck to the script uh, in terms of the shooting. Um, so what I what I learned, this is my first film, and what I learned is that a lot of times uh, you you can overwrite things, and and then when the actors come in, they they give everything in that one glance, and you just cut those lines and sort of. So there was a lot of that uh, happening. Uh, but uh, the the one montage sort of after the day uh, the day sex scene was I wrote it in the editing suite, um, and but this, the film is is pretty much yes it, exactly I think uh, as as it was in the yeah, script yeah yeah so we we, we really um, yeah like don't don't try any improvisation or anything like that. Um, I'm curious because you all have been traveling with the film since September. Um, how has it been received out in the world, both by general interest audiences, by LGBT audiences? Is there anything that has, has surprised you about the reception of the film um, with audiences thus far? Um, I, we, during a test screening, uh, the editor brought in her father, who's in his 60s, and somebody brought up this, yeah, and it doesn't matter how old he is, I don't want to be age, ageist here, but I, he's, you know, anyhow, he said, somebody brought up the strap on and he, he shot up and he was like, that's her thing, that's her thing, okay, back away from that, like, the, the kind of believability of that, and I was like, you go. Um, there we once had uh, somebody, uh, a, a young man in, in Montreal, was really upset about the all, all female crew, and, and there was uh, Amanda Funk going, oh, there you have them, oh, there you have the one guy that's rooting for the rest of us, kind of thing. <laughs> so I thought that was surprising, so things like that. Um, and what, When men make things about them that's not them, it's yeah. not that surprising. But, but, but yeah, it's yeah, so standing up for, for, for um, uh, It's well received in, in its niche audience, of course. Um, and, and yeah, it's shocking, like, it doesn't matter age, sexuality, whatever, people just respond to the film, um, and I think in whatever way is, is sort of real for them. So. Um, I'm wondering, Natalie, if you're open to sharing um, about your mom seeing the film for the first time in Toronto, and, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, at the end of the day, it was a really sweet, kind, generous yeah, takeaway, and, uh, but again, just in terms of how art impacts those around us, especially when um, we have performers and actors in our family that are that are doing their craft, and it's like, okay, so I'm just, if you wouldn't mind sharing. I, I don't mind. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm very close with my mom, and I, even when, when I was auditioning for the role, I was like, okay, mom, you know, I'm auditioning for this role where I will basically be wearing no clothes, and um, I would be doing sexual acts, and, uh, and she's always like, oh, and that's another little like funny connection between Eric and I. My mom is Swedish. So my mom was like, Natalie, I grew up in Sweden going to topless beaches and you know, nudity doesn't bother me. Um, so I was like, okay. So then when I got the movie, then she was like, okay, so let's talk about what you're actually, what, what, what are you doing in the movie? <laughs> And so, but still, she's just like very supportive, very happy for me. And then, you know, done filming, and then it gets into TIFF. And uh, so my mom was my date at the premiere at TIFF. And um, I saw her after the film, and she was just like kind of like very tight. Like just... <laughs> Like not really moving, like not really breathing, and gave her a hug, and I was like, "Mom, what do you think?" And she was like, "I'm like, okay." And we went to the after party, and it was actually really great because she was by my side the whole night and speaking with like Stephanie and all all the crew and tons of industry people, and everyone was giving very insightful interpretations and their take on the film. And so by the end of the night, my mom was just like, it's a work of art. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> she, she, she should be very proud. She, yeah, she but, be very but proud. she did say to me later, later on in the night, she was like, you know, Natalie, after you did that scene by yourself, by yourself. <laughs> I just thought, 
Mom approved. Um, we have some time for some questions, so if you have a question, please raise your hand. I will call on you and repeat it for everyone's benefit. Yes, right here in the front. Hi. Um, do you have a, a book you actually, do you have um, a book that you recommend for So the question is to both of you, um, do either of you have a favorite or most meaningful scene or moment in the film? Um, I, I have, I have a, a few for different reasons, but I think like for, for me as an actor, my, my scene that, I'm, that, that uh, means the most to me is uh, the scene in uh, the bathroom with Ryle at the end where she finally like really truly gives in to her truth. That's, that's the one for me. No, I feel like I'm so hard on myself that it's, it's hard to admit that I like anything. Um, but I, there's, there's, there's certain parts of performance that I can talk about that I like. Um, I, I like the part where Dallas kind of pulls what might be a hair in her mouth out of her mouth. I don't know why, I just love that part so much. Um, and I love when uh, when Jasmine says, when they're on, uh, when they go over to Jasmine's house during the sort of goodbye sex scene, um, when Jasmine stops and says, not in here, not in here, and she repeats the line. So I love that performance sort of choice. Um, but I think, whenever I think about the movie, I just kind of fall apart and like, it's hard for me to say what, I, I have this kind of really sort of bizarre relationship with it at this point. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Yeah, thank you for your question. In the back. Yeah, that was a great scene. It was like one of the few times that um, the Dallas character respected Jasmine's boundaries. I was wondering if you had any thoughts on why the character of Dallas was really such an misogynist. Like, what was the point in that? Um, why, why Dallas is such a misogynist? Um, maybe because I'm a misogynist? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. You can you elaborate on which moments you thought that were misogynistic? Jasmine said no. Yeah. When Jasmine actually told Jasmine to be not too rude, when she was trying to shake her hand, she told Jasmine to, um, oh, that they weren't done with their conversation. That was a favorite. Mm. It sounds like there's some feedback with some questions. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I, I never, like, I think that women can be misogynists. I, I don't think that that's not, that's not true. And, and maybe Dallas is, is a misogynist, if that's how you want to perceive her. I think the right question is, how, how did you want that scene? What was your thought in showing that scene like? So Dallas has a sort of. Like, mm -hmm. Frame of mind, like what, what was Dallas saying? Let's ask that question. So she's a misogynist, it means that she sort of, she hates women. I, I think the question that's currently on the floor is the question about the intent of Dallas right. during the scene. Wh which scene exactly? Because there's been a lot that's been referenced. The the scene in the strip club? Is that the one you're talking about? Either that or like when she's like, personally, I think that position, like, you really like a girl and you want to be with her. And like, you're trying to like, you're trying to get her to like, be with you. Like, you want to get to know that person. It's almost as borderline where I think the scene where she's, uh, where the kind of, it, in the bathroom at the club where she's saying, um, I think that she's trying, she's testing that sort of attitude out. And I sort of see that part of her character kind of slips away. So I think it's like kind of, it was a defense mechanism for her and not wanting to be in love. Um, 
Yeah, so I think by the end, there was this kind of change in her. And that's just kind of what she's used to. And I think it's, it's a, from like a sort of uh, shut down sort of place. Yeah. I'm getting the signal that we're actually out of time. Um, I wanna thank you both for being here. Thank you audience for being here for your questions. Uh, we have a little bit more time before we actually have to clear the house, so I know they're both down here and open to further conversation. Um, but thank you for being here, and again, the film opens on the 28th on VOD. Thank you.